We're going to do something different today. We're going to talk about seven charts for seven days. Why did I choose seven days? Because crypto never sleeps. And why did I choose uh, the title of this um, new series, a 7-7, seven, seven, because of what I just said, and because when I was a little kid, it was all the rage to have what's called a drink called seven and seven, basically seven up with uh, Seagram, Seagram seven and some ice and a Collins glass. I don't have a Collins glass, but in the freezer here, I've got an equally nice glass right here. Uh, and I'm having a seven and seven, and I suggest you might want to pause the video and get your favorite drink because we've got a nice show coming up. So let's get started. Hold on. So these charts, uh, these six, six or seven charts are brought to you by Charlie Bellello, who has a great website and he started a company called, called Compound. And I think you might have heard of him because he's always tweeting out and now he's got, um, I think he's got his own YouTube series. So let me minimize myself a bit here and let's look at his charts. All right. Basically, as you know, the federal funds rate was increased yet again last week to, um, uh, or the week before, uh, up 75 basis points. So basically, uh, we, the Fed was really behind, like a year behind raising rates. So even in the beginning when they started raising rates here, they only raised rates 25 basis points, then 50. Then in June, it was 75. Then they raised them 75 basis points in July, 75 basis points in September, and 75 basis points in November. So what do you think is December going to be? Well, I think it's going to be 50 basis points. And if you even look at the, the CMA Fed tool, basically the tool that tracks probabilities of the Fed funds rate, everyone's looking for 50 basis points. And I, I kind of was expecting that before. So I've been able to pin down the rate hikes pretty well. My only mistake, as I mentioned in the video, check down there, is basically uh, my timing. I thought it, this economy would slow down quicker, which would cause rates to go down quicker and the yield curve to invert, invert more, which hasn't happened. But otherwise, I, I've been able to guess uh, the Fed fund rates hike. So, hike. so let's go to the next chart. This shows you the year-over-year -year change in the consumer price index both overall and the core, which usually emits a food and energy. As you can see, it peaked already. Both of them peaked, and this is why, especially the, 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 super, the not superficial one, but the top line one peaked uh, and did a better job at peaking than uh, the core one. As you know, the core one's affected by uh, different things like uh, energy and transportation and rent, of course. Uh, but the point is, the stocks have been rallying because of the CPI. And today, uh, the PPI came out. And if you look here in green, uh, it was 6.7%. That was much better than the previous 7.1% and 7.2% consensus. Uh, these have to be shifted to the left, by the way. It, somehow it got moved. But basically, you could see there's a, an obvious peak in the PPI here. And this is... Uh, 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 final demand less food and energy. So this is equivalent to what's called the CPI core rate. So this is a PPI core rate. And you can see it peaked here. I guess that was in March. And it's been going down rapidly. So that's a good sign. Now Charlie Bilello wanted to focus on this and he's right, rightly so. The, the, P, the CPI has been higher than expected because rents have been very high and they haven't been coming down. But the problem is it's very lagged. And if you watch Jeremy Siegel, the guy that wrote the book Stocks for the Long Run, he keeps harping on this when he's on CNBC every single time he's on TV. He keeps harping that the data that's the, that the CPI uh, uses for rent is way delayed compared to real-time data. And Charlie Bellella also focuses on this. So, so the one I'm showing you now is the one that's reported by the report of the CPI. But if you look at other data for CPI, like this one here, as noted by Charlie Bellello, it's shown that the year of year peak was way back in November 21, and it's going down fast. Rents are going down fast. However, this will not be integrated into the CPI for months later. Next chart. Market expectations for the Fed funds rate is that the Fed funds rate is going to keep declining, and it's going to peak 
in May of 2023, May of next year, basically. And um, the key point here is the Fed's looking for a higher terminal rate, but it seems like the market is looking for rates to go down quicker than maybe the Fed. Now, the Fed's even said that it's going to keep rates higher for longer. So we have to see what's going to happen. I think the difference is the economy. The economy is very strong. No matter what way you look at it, it should be much weaker and, and, and it should have been affected, negatively affected by the higher Fed funds rate. That has not happened. Europe is weaker, China or Asia is weaker, Japan is weaker, but not the United States. And this is why the Fed's going to keep rates at a, high, a higher level. And that's why they keep talking about the, what's called the terminal rate. But if you look at tips, Treasury inflated, Treasury inflated protected securities and the Fed funds rate expectations and other probabilities and futures curves and forward rates, you're seeing that the market is expecting rates to peak pretty soon. And once rates peak, you may see a pivot. And lastly, the, this is the unemployment rate, and this is a problem. The unemployment rate is too low. The unemployment rate probably needs to double from where we are now to a much, much higher level in order for the Fed to get rid of uh, inflation. Because the problem is, I mentioned this a few times, maybe a hundred times, is that inflation is very sticky and it's coming from wages and it's coming from the service economy. So while the manufacturing economy is weak, the U.S. service economy, which is two thirds of this economy, is very strong and that's the problem. So what do we expect? What do I expect? A 50 basis point hike uh, in December, December 13th and 14th. And remember that's gonna come out after the PCE data and the CPI data. There's gonna be one more major uh, two more major in, uh, inflation data points that are coming out, and then the Fed's going to make the decision, but I think it's pretty obvious that the Fed's going to be raising rates. So uh, hold on. Uh, I expect volatility to continue. Times are going to be rough. And thank you all for listening, and enjoy your drinks, and have a nice week. Bye-bye.